Today's episode of Decently Indecent was a real treat. My guest, Josh the Snake, as some of you may know him, worked with me for years and played a huge role in both of my YouTube channels up until a few years back when Mr. Beast recognized his talent and snatched him up. <laughs> we talked some about his time working for the biggest online brand in the world, the state of social media, the fun we had together, and just had an enjoyable conversation overall. I hope there's something you find valuable in here for you. I know I had a great time, and I appreciate you guys being here. Thanks so much for listening. Decently and Decent, episode 12. I am filled with glee and pleasure to be here with my dear friend, uh, my first ex-employee. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the person that helped me make the most viewed video on my YouTube channel, uh, and now someone who is an integral part of the creative team at Mr. Beast LLC, Josh the Snake. Thanks for coming on, buddy. Thank you for having me, man. It's good to be back, man. I got to tell you, it's been a while. It's good to be back. One, <laughs> Listen, one thing I left off of that little introduction list mm. that is probably the most important out of yeah. all of them is you helped me build the Lush Life channel from the ground up. Oh, right. Up. Yes. Well, you yep. had you had a little you had a little start going there. I think you had like 30, 38,000 or something when I when I first started. So, but I did. Yes. It was uh it was the second channel I da I was dabbling in some vlogging. This is Jesus what back in 2017? Yeah, god. I am bad with years, but yeah, that was a lot of years Same. ago. I was <laughs> a lot of a lot of years and a couple states ago for me. Yeah. So, for anyone watching or listening, uh this is just a guilty pleasure of mine. Josh is someone who I uh, I have appreciated over the years, and we we became friends at the time we were working together, and uh, you know kept in touch over the years just because we we have a lot of similarities, Josh, you and yes. I, and I, in, in a weird way when <laughs> it, when we were working together, it was awesome because we were like great friends and yeah. loved hanging out with each other. But from a productive standpoint, I think it was a little detrimental because our personalities were kind of the same and we both excelled at the same things and sucked yeah. at the same things. Yeah, we both <laughs> liked doing the same shit so no one wanted to do the other. There, like, wasn't, a, yeah. there wasn't a lot of like complimentary things going on. It was mostly yeah. just us being good at the same things. Exactly. And then it was like, oh, scheduling, ideation, planning. Ah, fuck all that fuck stuff. Fuck all that shit. Let's just execute, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But in spite of that, we did manage to make some pretty cool shit yeah. at those yeah, times, we really but. did, man. The Badlands video was was that's one of the best for sure. And then I mean, also a lot of the Lush Life videos too. We did a lot of IRL stuff and did the Botox and you know some of the fucking noodle challenges the, the, and stuff. Yeah, the uh, what was it? The the trying the bad holiday foods. Yeah, man, those were fun, dude. Those yeah. were good videos. Those were good times. And that channel too. Yeah, building the Lush Life channel was really special and getting. Uh, Mrs. Lush involved, obviously. Yes, was, the wife. Was awesome. Yeah, yeah. You were there for that whole inception of her having zero camera presence and being super nervous, <laughs> yeah, and like dude. kind of seeing the growth there. To you know, all these years later, now she's like, she's a little whippersnapper on camera. Yeah. Sometimes she she drops some some of these little heat one liners, and I'm fucking. I'm like, man, all it takes is a little bit of time and consistency. Right? You can get good at anything. I know, I know. I've been watching, yeah. it and I'm like, damn, Mrs. Lush, she's she not holding back anymore, man. No, she don't care no <laughs> yeah. more, man. Yeah. You know, it's funny. I do have to thank you as well, because that, that Holiday Foods video, I think we told you this the last time you were there, was like, um, that was like the, the straw that broke the camel's back of her being like, oh, God. She saw herself and was like, I need to start working out. Oh, really? <laughs> and then went on to become like addicted to working out yeah. and lose like 50 pounds. There you and go. A fucking, yeah. <laughs> That was fucking That's wild. Funny. That was end of end of twenty twenty, I want to yeah. say. But you know what the yeah, one of the best ones was though was the the intros the that we filmed and gave the Fiverr editors. So that was like a main channel. We did a lot of main channel yeah. Lush Life duo videos. Where yes. it was like we had like the behind the scenes or whatever on the Lush Life channel. Uh, that, those were those were a lot of fun. That that was fun. She actually talks about that video still. She yeah. really enjoyed that one. We did the in. <laughs> the uh you know, we we took inspiration from the ace family introduction yeah. like all of those like family intros on the family vlog channels that were incredibly popular yep. just had the corniest bullshit intros all these contrived scenes of like the kids running up to the parents and <laughs> yeah. this be like this sappy music so we're like fuck and then this, like the gonna... dogs and the gucci sweater and shit <laughs> like what the <laughs> fuck <laughs> fuck the ace family well yeah. you know it's funny <laughs> Time is a cruel bitch because you what look the hell at them now. Yeah, what the hell oh, happened? They're there, bro? a fucking basket case. They're a disaster. Broken yeah. family. 
Oh. I don't know if the, the whole thing with them like going through a divorce or Austin getting kicked out and living in an RV. They're always getting kicked out of houses, I feel like. That's They're always what I living mean. in like, houses you, where they shouldn't be or something. That... You just can't know if this is literal, if this is them going through some advanced relationship struggle that's been scripted to try and get <laughs> right. views or get people's attention again. Or if like, you know, that's the problem when there's no line between your personal life yeah. In your online life, it's like everything becomes blurred. Which know? is what it is until you get like the kids and then it's like you have a kid involved and then it gets fucked up. You get you know multiple, I mean? three kids involved they three, and they're in the fuck. middle of this tornado of yeah. you being, uh, yeah, it's just anyway. unbelievably, unbelievably unhealthy. <laughs> Ace yeah. family aside. <laughs> yeah, so this next 90, you know, this next 60, 90 minutes, we're just going to be talking about the Ace family yeah. and how much we hate them. Yeah. Let's, let's pull it up. Pull up the clip. <laughs> <laughs> pull up the clip. Pull up Austin McBroom. Yeah, Jamie. All five foot three inches of him. Yeah. <laughs> um. So yeah, the 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 lush life thing is crazy. We used to we used to do some stuff together. We would record some videos together. Um, few, there was a few times you would you you came you came out from Colorado. I remember the yeah. first time. That was, the first time is the time we actually did the Badlands Drugs video. I think so. Yeah, like you I stayed. We recorded a video yeah. at the house, then drove to New York. And that was like pretty much when I was like deciding if I was going to move there. You know what I mean? That was like the yes. test run. And then yes. and then we did another trip where Kenna came out. And we both checked it out together. I, I don't right. know if we filmed. We did film some stuff then, but that was like I can't remember. But the, uh, yeah, no, I can't either. It's all a fucking <laughs> and it's blur. all blur. I mean, made VidCon was the first trip point. though. VidCon oh, was the first trip that I went to to right. like film with you, and that was when we filmed Chill, the music video. Oh my god! Oh my god! The music, yeah, uh, bro. We haven't even talked about that. That's the reason, the only reason you fucking gave me a chance. Because, like, I, I basically... You were supposed to produce my EP, or you Yeah, that, that was yeah. the reason why I got in contact with you. And That's I was like, oh, crazy. yeah, I'm an, I'm an editor, bro. I can edit. And, like, I'd edited music videos and stuff. And, like... So funny. But that wasn't even the primary reason why we got in contact. It was, like, so I could help you mix and produce music and stuff. And That's what it was. Yeah, you literally... I was, I was like, live streaming <laughs> to 30 people back yeah. when I, had like, just started on Twitch for the first time in 2018. You're like, yo, I make music. I yeah. was like, cool. I saw I sent you some. You sent me some mixes. I was like, great. And then two weeks later, we were fucking. It was a really. <laughs> it's crazy. It was really two weeks cool later, color. I was on a plane to, to meet <laughs> Nigel. And <laughs> that's right. What's going on with Nigel lately, man? What's the lowdown? How's Nigel? Bro, he's... <laughs> Where's my boy? Oh, I got him. For those not watching but listening, he he sits now, tall and proud oh in the God. in the in the podcast set. He's been like. <laughs> kind of just living the old man life, semi-retired, yeah. comes out of retirement once every, like, 40 videos. To he didn't, he didn't get a lot of lines anymore, does he? He does not, yeah. yeah he's not very... <laughs> he's not as... Uh, he, he, I actually... in one. He had an accident one of the times where I beat the piss out of him where his larynx got ripped out, so he oh, can't fuck. really talk anymore. Is it all high-pitched now and stuff? That's the backstory. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, instead of being a deep baritone, he's yeah. just <laughs> super high. Yeah, dude. That... I mean, Nigel, honestly, was... <laughs> That was old. He was probably the biggest part of my channel before, like you came along mm -hmm. in the Lush Life thing. He was, yeah, I guess, he was really my first, the first collaboration. Dude, I, did. I remember in like one of my early Lush Life edits, you having like a Nigel thing in there, and I was like, should I do it? Like, should I do the Nigel voice and like make a Nigel edit? I didn't know if I was like allowed. I didn't know if you'd be That's pissed right. off. That's right. That's right. And I just threw it in there, and then it was like, yeah, I, I loved it. Yeah, I loved it. I remember that actually. <laughs> yeah. That was fucking crazy. I know. Yeah, I, was, I was. I didn't know if you would give me that. I was thought you'd maybe be like, no, but <laughs> you let it out. You let it. <laughs> no, Nigel is my thing. It's mine, bro. You, yeah, you take. How dare you do creative voice. ownership over that shit? <laughs> fucking heathen. Well, it was funny because at the time, and the reason when I brought you on board to to do some music stuff, and then I was like, oh, this guy, like he can edit okay. I was like, I want to do some second channel stuff. I was still so protective over yeah, like, the editing, editing piece. Yeah. And I was like, well, doing some stuff on the second channel would be a good kind of like yeah. testing ground to mm -hmm. have you throw you some projects through you a couple of vlogs. And then that turned into like, hey, why don't I get my wife on board and we can sit down and do some reactions yep. and start doing that. And then, um, yeah, that went well. And still for a long time, it was still like it was a while before I think you started editing main channel shit. Yeah, it me. was it was like I did a video here and there every now right. and then it would be like a video here and there. And then, yeah, it wasn't until the end that I was like doing all the main channel videos. You yeah, know what I mean, yeah, but there was, was like, but there was a point near the, at the, by the end, it was like, I was doing all the fucking videos. Oh yeah. <laughs> I, yeah let me tell you, it took a little while, but yeah. once I got over letting yeah. go of the creative control, I was like. Okay, I could sit down. And those, yeah, those I were could fun. Do this edit that would take eight hours, or I could just tell Josh to do it, and he'll probably do as good, if not a better, job. Yeah, right. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna <laughs> go that route. Right. I'm gonna go fucking. 
I want to go out and look and hang out in the backyard. Exactly. And some whiskey by the fireplace instead. Yeah, yeah. No, oh. it was a, it was a good deal, man. And those were fun. All of those videos were so fun to edit, man. Like, it never felt like a job, you know. That whole time, it always, yeah. You know, it was it was. It never felt like a grind, you know. No, it's because I've never known what the fuck I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> part of the reason, yeah. <laughs> That's part of the reason. It's like, yeah. I've lived week to week, my which has been great. I've been we've been I've been able to do some great shit. We did some cool shit together. I've been proud of some stuff I've done now, and I have some other people that do some work for me now that yeah. have been, that have been great in the in the pipeline. But I've always been a uh, I've been a very 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 laissez faire, a little loosey goosey around it, which I think mm -hmm. it's just part of my personality. I'm sure if I ever really truly wanted to like scale and turn into something large, I'd probably have to hire like a like a, yeah, a, a CEO or yeah. something. You know, someone someone who can just like crack the whip and like literally mm. be my boss and be like, hey, you need to do this. And yeah. Like, oh, okay, no problem. Yeah. Right. Yes, master. Yeah. Yeah. No, no yeah, right. Yeah. It's who you are though. It's who you are. And it, it worked out. It worked yeah. out well. We still got yeah. shit done. <laughs> we at did. Our, and I, at our own pace. <laughs> at our own pace. And I'm I'm in in hind you know in hindsight too, or not even just hindsight, but part like part of the reasoning or I, I I guess it's a just justification in my head mm -hmm. uh, is, you know, around the time when my channel started doing well in 2018 is the same time I had my son. So I've always tried to balance like, you yeah. know, I, I'm a family man. I'm a dad now. So it's like there is an element of me really wanting to make sure I'm present for right. that. And like, you know, I look at some of the other people that are at the top of their game and there is, you know, I can't compete with them simply because I – I'm not willing to give a hundred percent of myself yeah. to the game. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. You have a family that you're, yeah, exactly. And that's how it is. And as long so it's, I've always been of the mindset, that, like as long as I'm able to continue to support myself, my family doing mm -hmm. what I'm doing. And you kind of go, you go through the ebbs and flows of different phases of that, that path in this particular industry and that career. Yeah. But I've been unbelievably fortunate to be able to continue to do what I do. Um, and well, you know, and still kind of live a pretty normal life. Yeah, like I'm yeah. not, I don't, I don't travel a ton. I go to right. Texas maybe once or twice a you're year. You're comfortable. You're comfortable. You're not I'm like comfortable. Yeah. 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 So, so there's definitely like a, a, a capped, like a limit to the upside. It's like the of law, that. law of diminishing <clears throat> returns, right? It's, you know, hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah. yeah. But you know, on the flip side of that, like, sure. I'd love to like, who wouldn't like to make more money and get more views. But I also, I don't think I like what comes along with it when you get to a certain level of just like growing yeah. too big where all of a sudden now it's now it's tough to live a normal life, you know? Yeah, yeah. At a certain point you gotta make your choice with how much you're willing to give to your career, your passion and and, and how much you're gonna give to your family and that how important that is. I think it's different for everyone. You know what I mean? Yes. Um, there's plenty of people who have kids that fucking just do it and work yep. their ass off and like Certainly. spend less time with their kids and like deal with that and whatever, however that, you know, plays out in their life. But I think that, yeah, I, I, I respect where you're at and I'm obviously a very similar person to you. And that's why I feel like we got along so well is because yeah. we have that <clears throat> same amount of give. I feel like that we want to, you know what I mean? To, to a point yeah. like, you know. It's like if yeah, I think to that point you made where there are there's obviously other people with kids more. I you know I have one kid like mm -hmm. this could be total cope like my mindset. There's definitely people that have more kids than I do that probably are much more productive in a business standpoint and spend just as much time with their kids probably. Yeah. It's, but again, it's my personality. Like right. um, it's just who you maybe, are. I'm just probably not as good at time blocking and doing things. And well, and even then it. it's not even like not as good it's as dude. It it's is. just, it's just who you are. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. It's just, just yeah. people are different people. Everyone is, is uniquely different and perfect in their own way. And like, yeah. it's all about just accepting those, you know, imperfections. If you want to call them that. I think um, I've been watching too many productivity change right now. yeah <laughs> now i feel guilty for not having every 15 minutes of my day scheduled to too many rise productive. and grind videos <laughs> yeah, dude. dude it's a fucking disease man when you go too far down that rabbit oh, hole yeah it's like you can't <clears throat> you can't spend 15 minutes not doing something without being like mm -hmm. fuck dude i'm wasting time i fucking hate those videos dude. Oh. i i like the the meme ones where they're like they're joking about it and they're like yeah my yeah. kids i don't spend time with my fucking kids they're not <laughs> how are they adding to my business <laughs> like what are, <laughs> what's was, their play <laughs> you know those are good I always I've remember, seen those yeah. one. They're yeah. like the wake up. You wake up at four a.m. to start your day. <laughs> it's like, yeah. the fuck Jocko off. Willing memes. Yeah, I oh, thought yeah. about that. I'm actually reading full disclosure, so I'm, I'm reading. That's a funny statement. Like, so I, <laughs> I try to when I can. I'm not the best reader. I do uh -huh. a lot of books on tape stuff, but I'm currently reading through uh, the Jocko Willing book, Extreme Ownership. I read that. 
I read you that did. book. Okay. That's uh, the one. I'm not not capping. That's so funny. The yeah. one book that I've read in my entire life, start to finish, pretty much is, is that book. <laughs> that, that, that's I'm so not funny, kidding you. Dude. I just happens to be that book. I read it like two years ago. Actually, near the time I was uh, in that Beast video, the solitary one. That's amazing. It was like right before I went in there, I read that Extreme Ownership book. Yeah. So how did how did you like it? I loved it. I thought it was great. I think. Um, I mean, it's hard. It's been it's been a couple years, you know. Uh, but I remember yeah. it being really impactful at the time, just in yes. the, in the sense of like, uh, not. And it sounds I don't know because it, it's like hard to not sound like uh, I want to say a boomer almost when saying cringe. this, but but yeah, cringe. But it's yeah. like not blame not blaming your outside circumstances or not letting that determine. You know what I mean? Really, uh, your path sort of is like I think the main takeaway I I took from it. Um, which is an unbel- which is an unbelievable takeaway and their yeah. framing is typically around leadership and mm-hmm. how you know no team can be successful without a good leader and what does yeah. good leadership mean it's extreme ownership like if you are leading a team or in charge of something like everything comes back to you there's no pointing fingers there's no yeah. you know, blaming other people what, yeah it's just you know, owning up for circumstance. what's going on around you and what's going yes. on like and i, I kind of yeah take that into into your relationships and not like outside of business you know what i mean i kind of took it into like my relationship now my marriage yeah. and you know my friendships yeah. my brother whatever <laughs> and just how you're kind of being a leader to those people when you are being your true self and you know what i mean being an example for those kind of people and with your actions instead of just trying to think of the right way to approach things or always just overthinking things you know what i mean it's more about just acting you know what i mean out of your true nature and then and then others seeing that and absorbing that you know what i mean and being a leader in that way you know what i mean 100 percent. yeah i mean there's nothing you know you there's nothing that is more powerful than setting an example yeah yeah and it's funny because I've gone, you know, I'm about halfway through it. I'm really enjoying mm. it. You know, there's stories from these guys are obviously SEALs. They talk about yeah. their time in SEAL Team Six. They talk about their there. time over in, uh, you know, Baghdad, yeah. being in a million firefights, having people that they love die. Like, so crazy. I, when I do read, you know, I'm not a fiction reader. If I am going to read, I really love the idea of trying to just get a little bit of insight into the world and how I view things through the lens of somebody else's experiences. And I mm-hmm. think that can be an unbelievable catalyst for just like, you know, my, micro growth, like whatever, mm-hmm. whatever it is. And like, it's a, the, the, the flip side of that is it's, it's a bit of a meme to be the guy who just sits down and reads like self help books every single day right. and continues to exhibit the same behavior year in and year out. Yeah. Yeah. But I do think that, you know, subjecting yourself to um the experiences of other people that have been successful in their field even if that field's very different than yours Mm -hmm. can just be an incredible way to just get you know different insights into how you might operate your own life your own relationships your business relationships your friends and your family and not everything that they say is going to necessarily apply to you but you can Mm -hmm. take you can take things from all of these different experiences from other people and i think that's incredibly powerful so i i try to do that i try to do that once in a while i've been yeah. i was on a bit of a cold streak i mean I'd be, when i was like first starting youtube full disclosure mm. i was like on a heater i was where big I was reader reading, like yeah i was like big reading smart the gary, guy yeah. reading the gary vayner <laughs> oh Chuck gary books, v. like uh, yeah. like uh, the mark manson like yeah. the subtle art of not giving a fuck which, oh yeah that's yeah. a fucking great book by i've the heard way. great actually, things yeah i'm actually a big mark manson fan i would say that book had a decent impact on my life but uh yeah, just dipping your toe in once in a while. Yeah. Like when you're in a rut, like things aren't going the way you want. You, it's really easy to get kind of stuck in this cycle of um, just too much introspection, too yeah. much self doubt, and like changing wondering perspective. What the fuck. You can't yeah, solve a problem from the same perspective that you the problem was created in. Even yeah, Einstein exactly. said that you have to rise to a different perspective. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Look at the problem from another fucking angle with new yeah. information, with new insight. You know what I mean? And you can and yeah. it is funny how you can draw that insight and inspiration from anything, especially creatively. You know what I mean? I mean, I can't tell you the number of times you're hung up on an edit or hung up on, you know, something music wise or whatever. Yeah. And taking a step away and watching a fucking nature nature documentary and all of a sudden <laughs> it comes to you. You know what I mean? There like that's is. how that shit works Absolutely. though. It really is. It's about changing your perspective and getting in a different mindset changing and not trying to Yeah, too, not trying sometimes. to brute yeah. force every fucking problem you have. Like don't yes. brute force it. Just like chill, change your environment, change your vibe and look at it again. 
You know what I mean? Yeah, and yeah. That, that's that's I've found that very helpful. <laughs> Deployed Love that it. over the last yeah. couple of years, and it's changed my life for sure. Nothing <laughs> should be brute forced yeah. unless it's war or anal sex. Those are the uh, only yeah. two things. Anal yeah. sex is brute force only. There's <laughs> <laughs> no other way to do it, really. <laughs> I just can't. I just, I'm clo- I'm damn near forty, and I can't stop make everything sexual. It's, it's like, it is what it is, bro. You dude, know what it, I mean? I think everyone so- everyone knows it by now. Is it news yeah, to anyone right. here? That, you, know? you know why? And and this is funny. I felt kind of liberated the other night. So. Mm-hmm. Are you familiar? Like you, you saw how like the roast of Tom Brady was on Netflix. I did. I'm sure yeah, you saw yeah. clips and shit yeah, like that. Yeah. <clears throat> so, I was watching that with my wife. Yeah. <clears throat> when it came out, we watched it in a few sittings. But I thought it was so funny that it was exactly what I thought. It was like all like the white boy football meathead locker room yeah. guys. Like yeah. their whole shtick was just gay jokes. It was like <laughs> that was it. It was good just to know they have about like, Yeah, it was like yeah. sucking dick and like oh you're sucking Tom's balls dry. And meanwhile, Kevin Harkins up there is like, what the fuck is going on? He's like, all you, like, all you guys talk about is sucking each other's dick. It makes no sense. I'm like, you know what? It doesn't make sense. But I was a football locker yeah. room guy, too. And that has clearly stuck with me my whole life. Because- yeah, meanwhile, you're there like, I could have been on that fucking stage. Yeah, I, I like, can do this shit. <laughs> you give me that mic. I, I, you give me that mic. I got gay jokes yeah. for days. If I know they were doing Tom Brady. If I knew they were doing gay jokes, I, I would have been. <laughs> you should have called me. <laughs> fuck, dude. I wish I was a Crazy. way bigger YouTuber. Maybe would have got invited right <laughs> no, i just need like a comic special or something or a yeah. haircut like andrew schultz <laughs> that fucking andrew haircut schultz. have you seen that thing no dude wait pull it up pull up the clip jamie <laughs> andrew schultz is there yeah jamie pull up andrew schultz's haircut let's Gosh. pause the podcast for that. i wish i had yeah <laughs> no i haven't i haven't seen andrew schultz all right do you but know I did, who he is yes i do i I, okay. I watched andrew schultz clip because he said that at the time sure maybe it's changed but at the time he said that the Beast video I was in was his favorite Mr. Beast video of all time. Let's fucking go. The one that you were in? Yes. <clears throat> That's amazing. So that was... There was a clip about that, huh? There was a clip about that. I saw it. It was a while ago, of course. But that's well, you when were I... Very, when you were very uh, amicable, amel- ameliorable... <laughs> There's a word I'm looking for. Amicable is like... <laughs> no, not, not amicable. Call lot. me mid, yeah. basically. <laughs> uh, no, not amicable. <laughs> You're very I mid. The, uh, I would... Uh, You're agreeable. <laughs> congenial. That's what I meant. Like, congenial. You're congenial. Like, you're easy to watch. You're okay. easy going. Yeah. Like, okay, it was a good like experience. That. You and your words. It, your big yeah, words. For, for, yeah. Sometimes... See, here's the problem. I'm on a podcast. I'm not editing. If I was doing that, like... For a main channel oh, video, I would have Google would have edited been out. out the part where I fucked it up three I times. I would have edited it. Out. Yeah, I thought, yeah, it would have been me. I, yeah, I'm sorry. I, and you, I would have. I would And Christian would have yeah, edited it out. Now I would have yeah. edited the part where you go on Google Thesaurus and try to find the right <laughs> word too. Bro, don't blow up my spot. I've never done that. It's like every fucking. Video. You're right, right. In my defense, okay. Usually I'll go for it because it comes to me in the moment, yeah. and then after I'm like, wait, I did that make sure sense? that works because I'm not. I'm 80 percent sure that word was right, but. But right. if it's not, I got to do that. Taking and game. if you don't correct it there, I'm not going to correct it. I'll yeah, let it 100%. fly. I'll be like, yeah. if it makes no sense, I won't know. And I'll just let yeah. it fly. <laughs> so I'll Google that. And I'll like yeah. 50, 50. I'm like, fuck yeah, nailed it. And then I'm like, yeah, we're going to redo that with the word that makes sense. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, if you don't take, yeah, you, you miss every shot you don't take is the great Wayne one. Gretzky. 21. Mike. Oh, I was about to say Michael you, Jordan. That wasn't a Wayne Gretzky quote. Uh, Google, Google, cut that. That was that crazy, too, yeah, dude. Christian, no, you're not, you're not cutting that shit. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking blowing it. <laughs> oh my god yeah so for for those listening and watching that i know there's going to be a lot of you know there will be some people that come here specifically to see you because i you know what's funny i <clears throat> still i got a comment on my main channel literally before mm. we started recording 40 minutes before this when i was like jotting down a couple questions yeah on my main channel video from today that was like tell josh to do whatever i'm like buddy it's been four and a half years <laughs> since he's worked for me i've said like how many times do i have to say Dude, like, should we make another goodbye josh video and yeah. <laughs> put on the main channel this time I'm yeah, like, just so you guys you, know how do you not know that yet like Maybe he just, this is the first Leon Lush video he's yeah, watched in It's old Rex. Yeah, like our old recommended stuff is it's probably just, like, he probably just binged a bunch of our shit. And then he's yeah. like. <laughs> it's so funny, dude. I that is like, funny. Oh. Yeah. Um, anyways, what I was trying to say is, I think I was trying to say that is you were, uh, for those listening or watching, you you were in a Mr. Beast video where you had to, yes. sim- in Mr. Beast style, had to stay in isolation for a- every day you stayed in isolation. You got 10 grand. Yes. You stayed for a while every day. They took away an item <clears throat> until it got less and less and less interesting. Yep. You did very well. <clears throat> you <laughs> planned it to propose to your now wife in the video, which was awesome. You yep. got a ring. She 
came in unknowingly. I she probably came in thinking like you were done or whatever. You yeah, she knew to nothing. Yeah, she just thought that the video was done and she's coming for the finale. She knew Love nothing. It. Her family was there and everything. Yeah, yep. that's so fucking unbelievable. And then the uh, yeah, you like smashed a guitar, got an extra check. It was the whole <laughs> thing was cool, and you ended up leaving with a nice little chunk of change to start your life as a yeah. as a new engaged man. Yeah, yeah, it was. <clears throat> Was that like a pivotal? Was that video like a pivotal point in your life? You think, yeah, for, it definitely yeah. feels like one of those things where it's like there was my life before that video and there was my life after. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Um, yeah, there was like your life before that video and your life after buying Gucci shoes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's all I spent it on actually. No, <laughs> but, no, I'm, no. I mean, I'm of teasing, course, it was course. like it was. It just felt like we were catapulted years into the future financially. Sure, you know what sure. I mean? Like these things yeah, yeah. that we've wanted for a long time and had plans to buy like a house and a mm -hmm. car and things that we've wanted to do to really start our life we were able to do a lot quick uh quick quick wow a lot quicker a lot uh, quicker a lot quicker than we than we yeah. thought and yeah of course like dude it was it was insane it was an insane experience of course wouldn't give it for anything in the world like yeah. i would do it again 100 percent. i'm glad i did it like it's just so yeah it there's no so words cool to watch man because i you know i you had you you had it had been maybe a year or two since you hadn't been working for me. You were mm -hmm. living in, you know, in North Carolina at the time. And uh, I just, yeah. I watched that video with so much fondness. I believe I watched it on stream. I was still streaming. You did. You then. did. I think I and you FaceTimed me after, I think. Did I? Yeah, I think I so. Cause I remember, I yeah, yeah, I remember getting on the stream and, and, <laughs> and saying what's up to everyone and shit. Yeah. That was awesome. It was, I, I think I watched you react to it. And that was a, that was a crazy right. moment, bro. Yeah. That was a yeah. fucking weird full the inception, circle. Right? Yeah, yeah, bro. Yeah. Like so weird, you know, to see that <laughs> there's, that there's no words, fucking, <laughs> but I was thinking about this the other day when you, you know, to go just the way it's funny how, how interesting life can be and how timing can be crazy. Like just literally yeah. you coming into my stream being like, Hey, I do music. I'm like, fuck. Yeah. You, you like do a thing. Then you right. start to edit for me. You move out, we work together and then you're really good at your fucking job. <laughs> I have a relationship with Mr. Beast. So like he sees yeah. my videos sometimes he's like, Hey, I love this fucking, I love these edits. He, I, I remember at the time he called me to reach out out of respect. And was like, Hey, I kind of, I, I want your guy to work for me. And I was like, Oh, all right. Was like, <laughs> that's fine. And at the time, I was like, well, all right. And me being a dumbass that just wants the best for everybody around me, I was like, Josh, you should definitely take this. Yeah. 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 You, you did. You it was like, probably, there was you not a probably second. Cause you, there was not a, a much... second where you tried to convince me to stay. And I was worried that you, like, you know, about that. I was like scared to be like, dude, I don't want to feel like I'm abandoning you. And to your credit, there was not a moment where you were like, no, you should stay. You were like, nope, this is a good move for you. You should do this. You <laughs> should like, go do this. I, yeah, I promise you I do not have the same <laughs> yeah. opportunities waiting for you <laughs> right. that this guy does right now. <laughs> no right. chance. Yeah. And all, in all that timing, and like the only reason I had a relationship with Mr. Beast is because, you know, I had been making commentary yeah. videos from way back in the day when he had less than a million subs. I made a video about him at the time, like around the time he was blowing up from counting to a hundred thousand. Yeah, yeah, that's you made a video and he like commented on it or something, right? Yeah, or, he, yeah. he sent me and then he DM'd me on Twitter. He was like, "Dude, that video was hilarious." I saw that. Yeah. And I was like, "Oh, thanks, man." And then you know, a few months later, after I had my blow up in my channel from the videos about the Australian brothers that were that's where I found dying, you, and that's where I found you. That's, that's where my you first, found yep, me. Yep. And then two months later, because of that, like relate you know he had seen the video and yeah he liked he he just liked some of the videos as big at the time he, he was like starting to you know he was blown up so he started to dabble in like these collabs challenges yeah the challenges yeah. and i you know he reached out to me he was like hey come out to la and do like this circle challenge and that was i believe the very first video was, of yeah. his that was like bringing in all different big youtubers from yeah. around the world to do this one challenge and it was a big prize too i think Cause it was 100K, yeah, 100K. Yeah, it was like, grand, wow. but I feel like yeah. that was big for the time. I feel like he oh maybe my god, at the time done... that was huge. Like yeah. everything was like 10 grand. Like yeah, that was, I was the max. gonna say. I feel like that was the biggest one that he had done yet. I feel like, and, and not only that, it was like some other some of the other biggest YouTubers like occasionally would do ones that were like five or ten, yeah. which was like at the time was like mind blowing. Like 10 right. grand for a YouTube video, to crazy. Be a YouTube, it's crazy. So then to bring in all these people and have like a hundred grand prize at the Clout House, at the Clout House where <laughs> Phase Clan lived, like people couldn't Phase believe. Clan. It. It's crazy. And now you yeah. fast forward to today, and the dude's giving out five hundred million dollars of video. You're like, <laughs> yeah. what? The? And that, not to not to mention the production cost. I'm, right. you know, I, he's talked about this. I've watched some shit like when he's on Colin and Samir and different times, and mm -hmm. it's like 
He spends multiple seven figs on pretty much every main channel video, I would imagine. Yeah, I would imagine. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I obviously don't know anything about the budgets, but yeah, they. Yeah. It's crazy, dude. Yeah, <laughs> the amount madness. of money that goes into them is is unbelievable. Yeah, my. Uh, I just told you this before we started, but my I just my son just watched his first Mr. Beast video. Yeah, he's, he's yeah, be dude. Soon, and because he has a friend in kindergarten who has a older brother. <clears throat> Who's you know of the age, that age where he's just getting into like YouTube, and yeah, if anyone yeah. gets to that age where they're into YouTube, it's like they're obviously going to have a Mr. Beast video pop up on their right or whatever. So we watched one about this dude protecting a yacht, and they were like shooting fucking trebuchets and <laughs> landmines at it, and fucking a hundred cannonballs. Yeah, like, I'm just like, and he's like, Dad, the oh. editing's trash on this. Who edited this? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, my son was like, well, Dad, it was entertaining, but the editing sucked. I that hope you don't sucked. know the guy who had anything to do with that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. No, that's just... awesome. Though. And he liked it, right? I mean. No, oh, yeah. he Of course he did. He loved it. And, and even me, dude, like I, you know, admittedly, I I don't watch a lot of Mr. Beast videos just because mm. I'm old and it's like it's not necessarily <laughs> my, my thing. Yeah. And, Part of there's probably five percent of my brain too that is just like doesn't watch it just out of envy for how good he is at kind of every aspect of the game, right? You know, so it, like in a weird way, but yeah, the, yeah. but the other ninety five percent is just appreciation for uh, his talent. Well, he. His talent, but also the te- it's obviously the team he's built. I mean, he's yeah, going to say, hey, what about me, man? Do- hey. you know, dozens and dozens, <laughs> hundreds of employees now, yes, multiple yeah. channels, like right. spanning millions of people, but tons of talented people. Yeah. But uh, to see, you know, where he's where he's gone from when I was, you know, making a commentary video about yeah. him sitting in his room, counting to 100,000 on a webcam. Saying Logan to, Paul 100,000 times. <laughs> to now being what I would consider Prob one of the biggest brands in the world, if not the biggest, yeah. uh, in the social media space for sure. Yeah. But I mean, I can't, you know, top 10 as far as like household names that spans yeah. internationally. Like there's definitely, I mean, you can talk about, other, you know, Gucci, fucking NBA, some of the biggest names you <laughs> right. can think of in the world. But those are uh, outside of the United States, maybe a little less, in it, but internationally, yeah. he's got to be one of the most recognized yeah, with people the dubs on the planet. Now. Yeah, the dubs changed everything, man. Well, that's what it, it's been a couple of years now where they they've been you know banging out his channel in like all the different languages, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, and at first it was like it was on a bunch of different channels, and now it's like more like the main channel is just dubbed. Like there's an audio track, and you can change. Yes, and YouTube, YouTube helped make that possible by integrating technology to to make it easier i think to yeah i think so i think so for yeah. people to just be like hey i want it in this language and then yeah. it'll be the same video with the proper language dubbed in mm-hmm. yeah that's, that's wild that's a trip they put on the uh, because you know in, in the video i propose and it's dubbed yes. in french so i've watched it <laughs> that's actually a trip watching it and i just watched the part where i proposed in french and it was like <laughs> so weird but yeah and all so, the no, all the so voice... romantic dude yeah on. no for real I was, I was like i couldn't do it that that good in english but <laughs> no no chance yeah but all the like uh the voice actors are like famous actors too so like yeah the, the, I, you know I what heard i mean like the spanish where... one is like spider-man i think or something so like when everyone he... knows them down there that's right I, I don't remember who i heard this from but when he was in the recruiting process of trying to find people to do the voice acting, they're like, "Yo, let's get people with yeah. recognizable voices." Yeah, in that geog- in that geographical location, which is fucking brilliant. Brilliant, yeah, <clears throat> easy, yeah. What a fucking trip, man! So you're now, I imagine, like a retention expert, or there's just a, like a lot. You must have yeah. just so much <laughs> experience in the game now. So if I was like, "Hey, Josh, I want to make cooler videos," like, what are the three things I should worry about? Mm. Uh, yeah, dude, I would say, yeah, there's a lot that goes into retention, you know, so it's hard to, um, but I think a (laughs) a common misconception about retention that I feel like is slowly being cleared up is that like, it's not just about cutting shit out. Like it's not just about making it faster. It's about making it make sense. Like the best retention is actually just something you can follow. You know what I mean? I like that. Um, and especially yeah. with the the beast videos are like sometimes they're trying to like communicate incredibly complicated ideas of like and a challenge. You also have hundreds of hours of footage from seventy right. different cameras on like every shoot, right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. 
yeah. on every, but on a lot of <laughs> on them, most just, of them yeah, I can there's... imagine there's so much fucking footage to right. hash out Ungodly. to try to make a cohesive piece of content. Yeah, exactly. So it's also it's really about clarity. It's about making your viewers understand. You know what I mean? Why they clicked on the video and like what is going to happen? What's going to happen here? <laughs> you know, I, I, yeah. it sounds so yeah. simple, but it's like, <laughs> honest to God, the the thing that I've really learned is is the simple stuff, but I've learned it to a really, really, really deep level and like yeah. done it hundreds of times now over and over and over again on tons of different formats. So like, you know what I mean? It's more like it's not that the information isn't out there. Um, and, you know, I've heard Jimmy goes on podcasts and says this, all of this. And oh, he, it he's is. right. There's no secret. Formula, There's no secret. It's just yeah. understanding that and really putting your content or whatever on, in an objective like environment. You know what I mean? Where you, you have yeah. to put your biases aside. <laughs> you know what I mean? And and just think about it from your audience's perspective. Like, yeah. stop thinking about it from your perspective. Who c- took the shot or said the line or whatever? Like, cut all that shit. Who cares, man? <laughs> just like, what? Think about it from an audience perspective that knows nothing about you. You know what I mean? Nothing about your content. Nothing about your video. And make that make that person interested. Yeah. The people that love you are going to be. They're going to be there anyway. They're going to be there anyway, and they're going to be having a really good time. You know what yeah. I mean? But like, yeah. if you can make the random like an someone over the shoulder like looking over the shoulder like they can kind of even understand what's going on and there's enough visually happening like you know what i mean yeah um so i don't know it's 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 a lot of that just clarity i think um and and making things make sense and information being delivered at very strategic times as well (laughs) yeah like how you're delivering your information should be thought out more like i think not a lot of people think about it they just kind of like write out their intro or write out their video and you know run with it but they they should really think about that a lot more you should really think about the order in which you're in delivering your information because like i'm deciding on whether or not i'm going to watch your video in the first 15 seconds so if like you yes. start fucking around with some skit or something or like and i'm not saying i'm not saying kill all creativity and just ah, you know that's the no it's mr the reality of, that, of youtube though, but like you said though with you with yeah. finding trying to trying to appeal to the largest audience possible yeah. which i think is obviously the goal for his main channel at least exactly right um, so there's like a, there's a fine line that. right where it's like a balance between creativity and retention but ultimately you want your people to you want your viewers to understand what's happening you can do that in a really creative way with fun skits and cool stuff where you drag it out and it doesn't have to be fast paced yeah. but if you understand what's going on i understand the objective you know what i mean you're giving me teasers you're giving me things to look forward to you know what i mean making it worth my while that's that's yeah. really what it's all about is just yeah. like when you're editing, it's like, it's got to be like, you have to be editing it and being like, this is amazing. This is really good. Like, this is, this is, you got to be like, you know what I mean? It can't be like giving you like a seven out of 10. It can't be like, oh, this is pretty good. Like, it's got to be like, you know what I mean? Especially like your first minute has got to be, you know, the hot. Yeah. You got to, you got to come off, you got to come off hot. Of course. And this is genre depending. I'm generalizing a bunch here. This is not going to be applicable to everything. Again, I think this is very specific to, creating content that is has the largest appeal to the yes. most amount of people yeah which i think has always been beast's goal on the main yeah. channel is to create the you know what he feels is the most uh over the top entertaining video for the largest audience possible mm-hmm. which he's uh you know obviously been done very well at yeah um but there's other niches that you can excel in Mm-hmm. with different styles obviously a little Absolutely. slower yeah. a little more st- you know and i think, I think the, of uh you know the, i think is i think of someone like mr Ballin. well even yeah. someone like mr Ballin, who's like literally sitting in front of a green screen and just storytelling kind of mm-hmm. like horror story stuff i guess to that point you he does do a good job of yeah. telling you what you're going to be in for if you yeah. stay with his video it's like, it's like borderline formulaic where it's like you kind of like after you've seen like five videos you like know when his call back you know when he's going to do the call forward and stuff but like and uh you know yeah so i i agree it's it's depending on the genre and and whatnot and but but that it is applicable you know what i mean to any genre just you know what i mean yeah even if it's longer slower pace like you still there's always that element of like if the viewer is confused in the first 30 seconds they're probably gone you know like also i would say here's another like quick tip that like have more people watch your stuff before you go live with it and give just honest like reactions because that's like something we do a lot of it's like there's a ton of reviews probably super easy to have tunnel vision when you oh my god close to the people doing it yes been watching it editing it for hours and hours exactly and even if it's a even if you're just an editor and you work for someone and you are not attached to the footage you still get tunnel vision you should still have someone watch it with an objective eye and like even just like i'll have kenneth sit next to 
me and Love just it. watch something because I just need to feel someone watching it so that yeah. I can be like, oh, this part feels... Because you'll feel it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You'll feel when things feel weird or when, when she's not getting something. You know what I mean? And I, th- I think a lo- too many people just like publish. They just go live. You know what I mean? Where like they should take a sec you know, and show someone and get an honest like, reaction because one little change of like, you know what? I think that this thing can be swapped with this thing. And then it's like this thing came two minutes earlier in your video and this is the good part. And now everyone watched it. And it's like, but you never would have thought of that because that's not the order it happened or that's not the order mm. you assembled it first. And you mm-hmm. just, this music flowed good here and you, this transition you liked. So it just went that way and no yeah. one told you to do it differently and no one's gonna, unless you show them it and get some opinions and you yeah, know what yeah. I mean? And yeah. I think that's that's the important thing, getting people to watch it, because then you'll end up tearing it apart yourself. You know, you won't even need them to say anything. You just need someone sitting next to you, and you'll you'll just know what's wrong with it. You know? Yeah, we should have done that with the Starbucks interview in the Badlands video, I, bro. Oh my <laughs> god, that kills me, dude. That I don't know how many views that video has, but it like would have had nine million, it would have had like three that. to four more million views if, if we that cut that fucking scene, in and that was on the fucking Lush Life channel, bro. <laughs> Like, which is it's funny so yeah funny dude yeah, yeah some questionable but, choices were made back then it was yeah i know some people <laughs> might be laughing along to that for those that are that you know are unfamiliar in in the video i was speaking of the the, <clears> the <throat> best performing video on my channel that josh and i did together where i drove to new york and did a collab with badland chugs we like did this scripted intro and like this story where we went to new york and even the yeah. intro too I even then was too for long, him yeah. so long. <laughs> yeah. in hindsight now with josh's experience we look back and be like we're like man we could have made that so much better but yeah. even with that the video did so well yeah even with um, that but there was a part like in the second th- the th- the, the part you the don't want to slow down on. The yeah, part you like, really the, just... <laughs> right when it should be apexing, yeah. like, shit's going crazy, and all of a sudden it cuts to me, like, interviewing in Starbucks him. with Badlands, like, in, interviewing like, him. Shitty in, audio, too. It goes to, like, audio. boom audio, yeah. which is just, like, that's another thing, with retention-wise, dude. Get your audio good. Like, that's a huge yeah. thing. And, like, oh, holy fuck. God. And then, like three minutes sit down interview, and then it's like, all right, back to, and then we just boom back to the cinematic fucking like, like what Gatorade bottles. Like yeah, like in hindsight, I'm like, it's so obvious. Like right, did I was just trying to pad. It was the trying time, to like, I, no, I, I think it was like a trying to be self aware thing. I think it was like because we were playing a lot of shit up. It was, yeah. and we like hadn't really introduced him. And at the time, your channel like that was something totally new to do something like almost narrative like that, and it not be like a sit down right. kind of this back and You're forth. Right. Right. So it was like I think it was it was an effort to like not freak your audience out and be like, hey, guys, here's some familiar shit of us sitting down and talking and kind of doing yeah. this. But what we didn't think about is like, hey, for this one video, fuck your normal audience. They'll yeah, get over it. This one's going to go to a bunch of new people. Are. Exactly. Yeah. This one's going to go to so many new people who don't give a shit about this scene. <laughs> yeah. But it, again, also at that point, they were 10 minutes in the video and they'd already watched two mid-rolls, so who cares? <laughs> yeah, still made money, baby! <laughs> oh, my God. I, I've been thinking a lot recently about... You know, all this talk about like retention and stuff like is obviously important. You need to make a good video, but like mm-hmm. I feel like something something that I've always been the worst at, and that I've actually had a strategy call with some people today because I mm-hmm. really want to start taking this seriously is y- your videos live and die by the first step of just coming up with decent ideas, like yeah, yeah. a good idea. Like yep. you can make the best video in the world edited perfectly, mm-hmm. and if it's about like basket weaving, there's only a, there's yeah. only a there's only a certain audience that's going to get that video, yep. right? Yeah. So this is something that I've I've really slacked on over the years. You know, I have like my brainworms thing, and mm-hmm. so I've always kind of I've always really been <clears throat> chasing my tail and like waiting for something to happen or waiting for a good idea. And, and when you're doing commentary around stuff that is some sometimes topical, yeah, that can work. It can sometimes. hit sometimes. Yeah, you can hit something that's hot and yeah. Yeah, but I'm just bad. So so I I've been I just today had my first meeting with uh, a couple of guys who are. Um, this is what they do. They they work with channels and they're like, yeah, we'll mm-hmm. we'll look around. We'll we'll try to help you. Like they essentially they're just the back end analytics guy. They see every yeah, video yeah. that's on YouTube. They see outliers and they're like, all right, this is your niche talking head commentary style. They look. They scour over everything, and they're like, "These are some ideas we think you could do really well with." Yeah, here's some good titles, thumbnail combos we think might work. Mm-hmm. You should try these. And I was like, "I was like, man, this that's what this I is crazy. It's the yeah. first time in my entire career where I've literally spent, but like to give you an example, my process now is to be like, "All right, here's a here's a cool body cam vid, or like this is a brain like like let's do some brain worms." Mm-hmm. Um, 
And it's like people like like I have a an audience that comes to watch these things, so it works. Mm -hmm. But as far as finding a new audience, I've right. always it's it's gonna be difficult because it's just a very competitive YouTube's very competitive. Now, yeah, because it's like what's the yeah what's the title and thumbnail that's gonna get them to click? So with all so, the infinite, so that's the thing. So yeah. I have like a banger brainworms where I record. I was like, man, that was super funny. I had some really good jokes. It's mm -hmm. edited. I wait until like an hour before I'm uploading it to come up with a title and then i'm like stop out you how to fucker i'm <laughs> dead ass like it's like do I, you like, still do your own thumbnails i still do my own thumbnails. god damn it <laughs> <laughs> and that was part of the conversation today i have yeah, three yeah. thumbnail artists i'm reaching out there you to go. to be like yo let's make some banger thumbnails because yeah. like similar to like so are you familiar with oompaville obviously yeah of course yeah, yeah. so you know, same thing with him. Like he went through a long phase. Like to his credit, he's a he's a workhorse. He fucking yeah. just cranks out content, runs a candy business. Love the dude to death. He's an unbelievable worker. He works yeah. his balls off. But uh, you know, he did long time. He was doing like his face in the thumbnails and all these things. And I think there's an element, obviously, where that's going to be appealing to people that really want to watch your videos because it's mm -hmm. immediately recognizable. But when you're somebody like me, that like. You still, you know, I'm in a place where like that works, but I mm. still want to grow and find a new audience. And yeah. you have a, you know, a 39 year old man with Just like a half it. white yeah. beard, like <laughs> on the thumbnail. It's like, like it's an immediate turnoff. So, <laughs> so I'm really, I, I'm, I'm, I'm working. The goal on, is to deceive them with a thumbnail. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just have it be a d delicious rack of tits. Yeah. And then we'll AI by a beautiful thumbnail artist. AI the first then, 15 seconds to that, deliver yeah, that just, thumbnail. No, just, right. Just voiceover then, for the first yeah. voiceover for the first 30 seconds. And, and then, then just whoops, Daisy. Here's me. Yeah. I'm, hey. an fucking, <laughs> I'm an old cracker, fucking middle aged old man. Yeah. And oh. the video starts now. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha, bitch. <laughs> That's actually kind of funny. <laughs> yeah. So, so that, so I've, I've, I've just finally turned the page in my own mind. Like, all right, yeah. man, let's like, you, you know, like I said before earlier in the podcast, like I've definitely, there's definitely a level of like comfortability to what I do that I, like the routine I've fallen into and it's working yeah. really well and it's worked really well. And like this, the, the second channel that I do with Christine has been really great since we mm -hmm. started working with an agency and uploading three times a week. And yeah. we have a really great audience there. But uh, even then, like there's, we're, I'm, I'm good at like hitting the audience that's there yeah. to see me. I'm very bad at finding a new audience. Mm -hmm. It happens once or twice a year. Maybe I just get lucky. Right. Because I'm never thinking about it. I'm you just always need just some, like some little pillar, little vlogs, bro, little Botox video, that, little yeah, little spicy <laughs> noodle challenge yeah, once right. every three months. I need to change camera, it up, man. hit the new audience. <laughs> I do. So it, this is all kind of main channel stuff I've been talking about with this ideation thing. But I do think about in like on the second channel I do with Christina. Yeah. Um, do we have such a we have such a awesome hardcore fan base on that channel? Yeah. That will show up in what obviously some videos do better and worse, but we just have such a great baseline level of people that just love to come to see us kind of interact with yeah, yeah. what the content is. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, man, there's just so much opportunity on that channel because it's really hard to recreate. Like the reason people love to come watch us is because they enjoy the dynamic between us as a right. married couple that are like in their late thirties, mm -hmm. you know, I think we have a we have a wonderful rapport, her and mm. I. Like in in this, I think it's just it's just our relationship, and we're not right. trying to force anything or pretend like we're anything. Like when we're on camera watching these videos, the videos are kind of just an excuse for us to kind of like have moments yeah. of talking shit and making fun of each other, whatever. Right. And people really love that, and I think that's something that we do well, and I think it's appealing because in the relationship, the couple space, there is not a lot of that. A lot yeah. of it is just very Bullshit. contrived and forced yeah. and it's not a lot of real, just yeah. Right. Genuine shit yeah. out there with couples. So yeah. It's like, you know, uh, like testing my, you know, buying a <laughs> escort for my boyfriend to see yeah. if he's loyal, you know, what <laughs> right, I mean? right. all this bullshit or, you know, yeah. that just drives me nuts. So, so that said, I just think there's a lot of opportunity between her and I to, yeah, to grow out of just the desk reaction stuff and do mm -hmm. more, do more IRL stuff like we were doing a little bit with you, yeah, um, and just take that to another level. So I'm looking into to how I can do that. I mean, it. I think that's obvious... why. I think that's why it works though. Is like just going back to what you're saying with you guys being yourselves and it kind of just. I feel like 
the you guys would have gotten so sick of that shit if you were being characters, if you were yeah, playing yeah, it up. Yeah. If you were, and I think that's why it works. Obviously, that's why it works. That's why like people see the genuine and they like that. Yeah. And so yeah, it's it, it's one of those things where in the second channel it's like that fine line between and i remember even you and i talking about this a lot like how much do we care about growing the second channel how much do we want it to just be a place for like genuine content where like the people that know what they're gonna get and they love it you know what i mean and so it is it's one of those things where yeah you you, you keep being yourself and i don't see anything wrong again it broke don't fix it it'll grow as it grows but little irl oh, so. content i think won't hurt every now and then you know what I mean to change it up, but I like think, you said, yeah. like a, like a couple pieces of pillar content here. And yeah, there. that are really, are really like really well thought out, a little ahead of time, and mm -hmm. you just you you see if it works. Like they're not all going to do great, but you might have that one thing that's like the the Badlands Chugs video yeah, for that exactly, channel. You know what dude. I mean? Exactly. Yeah, I so, love it. That's where my mindset is on that. But I love. I always. I'm just. I'm so selfish. I just love talking about this shit with you because yeah. We, you know, you're in it. Of you're, you're balls deep in it more than I am. <laughs> and, uh, you know, the, the little I think about it, I don't really have anyone in my life that I can talk to. So it's always great to, <laughs> to chop the shit. But yeah, uh, man, what to, I'm curious for you, like as somebody who's, as I said, so balls deep in it, like what are you <laughs> what kind of content are you are you watching right now? Like if I pulled mm. up your YouTube home, oh, my God, what would be in the top eight? Dude, Besi okay. besides bikini <laughs> try on hauls. Yeah, besides bikini try on hauls. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um so dude I ironically and I know what's gonna come up right after I say this, I've been watching a lot of skating videos. And <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I bet I did. you have, dude. And yeah, so this you podcast got little, you got a little overconfident, yeah, didn't you? This podcast was supposed to come out a week ago. Two last, weeks ago. Or two weeks ago. Yeah. But I like almost broke my ankle. I think you, yes. you you showed him the clip on the last podcast. Yeah, I did. Right? So yeah. for any so for any like <laughs> uh so for any real ones that watched, I think it was two weeks two ago weeks last ago, week yeah. I was had Big E on. Uh, Josh, I was supposed to record him two weeks ago, and he sent me a video. He somehow got it in slow motion because he thought he was going to do a sick razor scooter trick. Yeah, I almost some, did. Off of some high ledge at – you were at work, right? It was like at a warehouse. <laughs> oh, that's the still frame. <laughs> yeah. Uh... It's like sideways, dude. <laughs> oh. So you like you did you did everything except break it like you yeah. strained it pretty good yeah how's it I feeling did. now two it's, weeks later you're doing okay yeah I'm doing all right I I, I hobble you know yeah, what I mean still hobbling a little bit but anyway going back to YouTube recommended yeah so that's I've been watching some skate videos but um I'm I don't know I'm into a lot of like uh like universe like kind of like uh I'm trying to think like metaphysical type of stuff sort of consciousness Ooh, go like on go do you know on. what I mean. Um, yeah. Stuff like that. I can't think of like any. You've been smoking a lot, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, a lot of. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> been getting real deep in that. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, I like that. I'm trying to think of what like some funny stuff that I've been watching lately. Um, I when, when you say metaphysical, what are we to like? How far down the rabbit hole are you gonna? Are you about to start telling me that like I'm an Aquarius, so I'm X, Y, no, and Z? Or I'm not into like about, star like... signs, but just kind of like what consciousness is, and so, you know what I mean, sort of what reality is. Because like, you know how very, I, I, just very abstract, philosophical. Yeah, exactly. Type of stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. Some like stoic type of stuff, but also like, like you know it. they're ta like uh, the whole like the universe isn't locally real. Like you know Hubble the this, or not Hubble the uh, Nobel Nobel Physics Prize like a couple years ago. There was like they talked about quantum entanglement. I don't know if any of this is. I'm for familiar you, but... with quantum entanglement. Yeah, so just, like I don't know, all of that phrase, kind of connects to consciousness. It. I think, and like I don't know, there's like a lot of cool metaphysical like stuff out there that I've been watching with that. But mm -hmm. I can't think of any like particular channels or. But a lot of like skate videos, you know what I mean? Yeah. But, but that's so just you... like that's my bullshit. Like just entertainment, like pastime, you yeah. know. But a lot of like stuff about the universe, you know. Like there's a channel how. Uh, uh, the entire history of the universe, I think, is what it's called, and like just lots of cool videos about space and stuff. I've always been into that stuff, though. So you're at that phase of your life where you're look like you're looking for meaning, right? Yes. Yeah, like, uh, yeah I, I mean, I that... feel that I found it, but yes. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I feel like I found it too. I not not just meaning, but I I feel a lot of the I feel a lot of those things. I'm drawn to yeah stuff about the universe and the mm. the gravity of how just unbelievably complex and yeah. large and and how little understanding we probably really truly have of yeah anything and even even as complex of some of these as some of these models are yeah. in our in our quest to understand our own existence it's just you know it's just unbelievable the the gravity of our existence. Like just yeah. the fact that we're sitting here talking to each other, like it's very, 
it's easy to get overwhelmed. That, so yeah, I love yeah. stuff like that too. Me but too, I get, yeah. I get very overwhelmed sometimes when I'm like, mm. oh my God. Like one reason I like watching s- stuff, content like that is because it helps give me perspective. Yeah. Like when when you get caught up in your own head and mm. the silly little problems that we deal with day to day. Yeah. And these things that seem so monumental right. in our life from day Helps to day. Put it like, into perspective. Yeah. You're like, dude, how right. insignificant really is yeah. all of this? <laughs> I, I've just <laughs> right. become obsessed with like, yeah, trying to like understand really what this is. You know what yeah. I mean? Just like, yeah. it's like, <laughs> You know, like, is it just consciousness? People have been trying to do that for thousands yeah, 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 of exactly, years. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, <laughs> so why religion was why religion was birthed? Yeah, yeah. and I'm trying to solve that by with my YouTube recommended. So, yes, <laughs> you're on your I way. I think baby. I'm there. I think I found it. So, <laughs> the Carl Carl Marx a fucking YouTube recommended. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, but, uh, I love that. I'm sure there's a lot of good content around that on YouTube there is. too. It's it's just uh, mine's just filled with golf shit. Yeah, what's it, your golf shit now? Yeah, you big golfer now, huh? Uh, yeah, dude. Crazy. I don't know. It's it's like I realize how lame that is to say <laughs> from the outside world, from like people that don't really enjoy golf. It's like I remember right. when I was younger, and I'd meet people that'd be like, "Oh yeah, I golf. I love golf." And be like, "Hey, you're fucking gay, dude. Yeah, you're fucking no, cool, no, bro. Cool, bro. <laughs> Sick golf. You fucking smash a little yeah. white ball with a club, dude. Badass." <laughs> and then I got into it last year, and it just like it's this weird. It's this weird combination of all, a lot of things that I love where it's like it's challenging, you know, yeah. as, as a man, as an alpha male. It's like you need to have something that's challenging. It's yeah. like I'm not a I'm not going to go like roll on a mat, Brazilian like BJJ with like some other dudes. Yeah, and like yeah. scrap. I want something that's challenging in that way. So it's, it's hard. Like mm-hmm. I'm putting reps in. I'm trying to get better at it. Yep. As an ex-athlete, like it's fun to have something to work at to get better at that's yeah. considered a sport. Um, that you can, you know, carry on into your 50s, 60s, 70s on like, you know, football, baseball. Oh, yeah, I've golfed. You... I've golfed in my day a couple of times. In, oh, in yeah, high you swung yeah. a club or two? Yeah, I took a golf class in high school, so <laughs> I kind of know <laughs> what I'm doing here. <laughs> a golf class. I actually just had my second lesson today. So oh, I, really? Uh, yeah, I grinded for, you know, the whole last year and a half mm-hmm. and just basically learned through YouTube videos and just watching yeah. swings and stuff. So it's been really nice actually having someone that knows what the fuck's going on be like yeah. hey just do this thing turn your wrist that way and then it's like <laughs> and wow, then you'll be the better <laughs> yards farther imagine yeah. that <laughs> holy shit yeah <laughs> it's so, almost like this guy knows what he's talking about <laughs> yeah yeah so just golf and then obviously bikini try and halls well. right yeah of course yeah that's I don't. I don't think that'll ever change from anyone's recommended, though. I think everyone no, gets those, right? I don't, don't watch. That's them, not man. me and you, right? I think that's everyone, right? I Just think comment down below. I think yeah, that like no matter what, that. even like I know the YouTube, you know, your your homepage is obviously uh, in, is a bit of an indication of like your interests, but there's mm-hmm. definitely content usually focused around tits. That yeah. just finds its way to people's own pages. Regardless. It's not our fault. It's not our fault. It's their fault. It's, it's Google. No, it's Google's it's, fault. It's, yeah, it's Google. <laughs> it's, it's fucking Google. bastards. It's Google and these <laughs> fucking damn girls making a living off of these things. <laughs> and guys like us consuming the content. And guys like us being like, well, <laughs> Who <can pick> only fans <laughs> take yeah, my credit card. <laughs> I don't know why this is here, but we'll just see if I don't really believe that she tried all these bikinis. I just want to make sure she did it. You know yeah, what I mean? I want to yeah. make sure it's not clickbait. Is this That's clickbait all. or did yeah. she really try on seven different bikinis for no reason? And Mrs. Lush like, walks in. Honey, I was just... Yeah. <laughs> I was uh, just making re- sure I, she I did it. I was researching for a video. <laughs> <laughs> we were going to react to this on Lush Life. I swear yeah. to God. <laughs> it's, it's funny because I, I, I've i done a few videos over the years that- uh, Like you the, cleaning? The, the, the cleaning? The cleaning, yeah. yeah, the, yeah. the cleaning moms. <laughs> yeah. You remember that one yeah. from years ago? And then I yeah, did dude. one more recently um, where it was f- girls that were in like the outdoor <laughs> overnight camping niche and they're <laughs> using like- camping and overnight camping as an excuse to just like dress up in thongs and like show their ass cheeks and then of was course it like, like time a- lapse stuff like the vacuum one where they're like setting up a fire and their ass would go by the 100%. camera 100 percent. oh wow that. yeah <laughs> and there were pe- there were girls in that niece that actually made like aside from the explicit sexual nature of it yeah like the good video coin. was cool like oh, it was good yeah. And then there were other girls where it was just literally like no effort like oh i spent a night camping in the woods by myself and it was like just them in a thong, like doing nothing for like fucking 18 minutes. <laughs> like, like not even in the fire. woods. <laughs> They're yeah. just like in so, their bedroom. <laughs> so I made a video of it. And the whole, the overarching theme is like hijacking non-sexual niches and yeah. injecting 
uh, you know, this kind of Only sexual fans. nature to it. Yeah. And, and not w- without explicitly saying it where there's no like it's there's no mention of what they're doing. Like, this is the genius of it on YouTube is they're using these niches that are popular. They're sexualizing them without saying it. And then all of their links are in the description. Right. Yeah. It's and every genius. single fucking <laughs> comment is like, gentlemen, uh, yeah. gentlemen of culture, it's good to see you again. And like <laughs> it's, it's everyone commenting like the timestamps of like when you can see yeah. their tits or their ass. It's just like. It's such a weird culture. We, I, we live in a hyper pornography addictive culture, obviously. So, like, it's just natural for anything sexual to just to be absolutely like a piece of red meat in a shark tank, and all the fucking young <laughs> testosterone filled boys are like, oh, 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 fuck, oh, fuck, fuck yeah, it's foaming at the mouth. <laughs> it's cooler. Like, I could go to one hundred other sites and see full penetration, but it's on YouTube. It's on so YouTube. It's cooler. So it's yeah. Exciting. <laughs> yeah, it's exciting because I'm not allowed to see it all. <laughs> it's a tease. It's so fucking weird. The whole nature of it. So. Yeah, I've always been intrigued by that. Oh, chiropractor videos too. That those don't ones get, yeah. don't even get me started on chiropractor Crazy. videos. I remember that one that you did on the chiropractors. <laughs> Listen, I you know, as much as I like, we'll talk about it, and make videos about it. You know, don't hate the player, hate the game, right? Like yeah. it works. Like if you're a chiropractor and you want to grow your business a hundred x, yeah, just. Uh, DM 150 Instagram models and be like, yo, I'll give you free adjustments if you just come in in some real scantily yeah. clad bullshit and let me like pump, you know, 30 frames of your ass cheeks into the camera for like 45 minutes. Right. And then yeah, you speaking- like, you randomly get that one that does like 3 million views and all of yeah. a sudden you're doing five. You have a career. Yeah. You have a career. <laughs> Dude, speaking of sexual nature, dude, did uh, fucking Attaway General come out with another season ever? Did Dr. Oh Henry ever make God, a comeback? Dude, you know what's crazy is I, like, in thinking about the stuff we did together, I yeah. just blanked that out of my brain. Dude, the gaming I channel. I, like, forgot about the gaming channel and Dr. Henry. Dude, Holy unreal. Shit. Unreal. The, Are those dude, videos still out or is this dude, the gaming so that, channel now? No, so <laughs> it, it literally became this podcast channel because I was just like, it, so they're still private. I watch them at least once a week by myself. Of course. Right, yeah. Right. But uh, all those Warzone highlights, all those sick oh dubs we got, dude. Oh my God. That was, so, what a time that was. Hell dude, yeah, dude. The, the Warzone streams and then the, 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 general, general, the we had best. such a solid core, uh, like a solid yeah. like core group that watched those streams with us. Oh yeah, dude. And that was when uh, Barry took over he was doing the edits and like he made the montage of like dude, all Barry the was a great editor yeah. dude he was fucking funny. that was awesome dude i love yeah. that that was such a fun time dude dr henry we man that that, Doctor poor, that old guy dude yeah i, I want to meet that guy one day i want to come face to face with that guy one day you remember when we did that the end at the end of the series we like looked at their instagram just to see how they were and dr henry was like this bleeding liberal activist yeah. We were, That's oh, right. he's, he's a gay, I he's forgot. a gay, bleeding liberal activist. I was like, "What the fuck am I watching?" Well, right now? Yeah, we were like making him out to be like a closeted gay guy. That's yeah, like super conservative. Like, like, badass, like yeah. yeah, yeah, like total badass. No, every one of his Instagram posts was like, "That's right." I, I forgot. I don't even know, but it was he was just, like at riots and stuff. It was and, like, so exhausting watching his Instagram. I was like, "Bro, God I forgot damn. about that." There's a reason why your fucking highlight of your life is casted being cast in general. general, like working alongside fucking 16 year old tip doctors is a 50 year old man disaster oh man what a legend though in the, yeah in the, in the show i would still wow. suck his dick for i mean sure. yeah i would do uh, yeah, fucking unholy sure. things to him yeah i'd pay to do it yeah Even a couple hundred at least who cares <laughs> send it who cares <laughs> it's dr h dude what am i supposed to do oh my fucking god oh uh, what, what else i so i i feel like i've 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 gotten a pretty good picture, you know. I I didn't get. Oh, I was gonna make the joke. Now that it's fucking an hour into it, I was gonna make the joke earlier. I was like, yeah, you know, Mister Josh, uh, you know, my good friend used to work for me, and then he went to work for Mister Beast, and uh, I've, I've been instructed by my lawyer not to ask the wrong <laughs> questions, or I'm gonna get live drone striked. Yeah, I mean, we got the we got the drone. I got a live feed actually. Your house is on my right there's monitor. Literally just drones. Yeah, this is a, there's right an infrared now. drone. I can see you actually <laughs> yeah, through the like, window. Tell me about that time, Jimmy. <laughs> 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 Fucking shit goes up in flames. 
<laughs> yeah. It just, hey, it's being recorded in the cloud on Riverside. It could still go up. That'd make yeah, for a pretty know, good man. podcast. Yeah, we could take down Riverside too. That's what. Hey, <laughs> that's one way. <laughs> that's true. As long as I don't, you know, as long as the question doesn't come out, it's like Leon Lush dying mid podcast. That might actually yeah. get my podcast some traction. I should try. And then, it. Oh, and the nice thing is you'd have my reaction because my cam would be fine. You know what that's I mean? That's true. Yeah, you and would it wouldn't even be there. like I would know it was going to happen, so I'd just be like. Just like turn turn my <laughs> yeah, shit yeah. off and just leave. <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> that's what happens. Yeah. Shut the fuck up. Yeah. <laughs> Don't ask the wrong fucking questions, boy. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you doing? Like so, uh, hyper, uh, hype, uh, hypothetically is the word mm-hmm. I was going to say. Hyperbolic, not the right word. This hyperbolic. Is situation. <laughs> yeah, this is one of those situations where yeah. I should have googled it first, but I can't because <laughs> it's not a main channel video. Uh, hypothetically, a um, couple years in the future you know some you move on do something else where would you where do you see where do you see yourself in a cup like if you could move somewhere else where would you want to move first of all two-part mm-hmm. question do you miss colorado where you're from mm-hmm. and obviously you live in nc now and if yeah. you were to live anywhere else where would you like to live honestly i don't really <clears throat> want to live anywhere else it's you like crazy. It i love it yeah That's so awesome. like we because i mean we bought a house that we i'm jealous fucking love yeah. and it's like uh, obviously, the cost of living is a lot lower here, so That's, I was able yeah. to get a house that we can have kids and grow into, and I still have this room and a room two doors down that's got a drum set in it and stuff where we recorded my album and stuff. So, like, uh, and not to mention the beach being close by. I mean, that's where I was the last two days. We just went down to the beach and stuff. So, like, I really like it out here, and obviously we bought this house. I don't really plan on going anywhere, to be honest with you. Neither does, you know, we're kind of here. We got friends here, too. Like, a few of my friends moved out here. Yeah. Uh, my good friends, Once Riley and have Nick good and, community, there's, yeah. like, no reason. Like, that's That's so what important. I mean. It's like I got yeah. homies out here. My dad moved out here. He's uh you know living nearby and i got another yeah. friend that's moving here in, a, in next month so yeah. you know it's like I, I geographically i have no plans of leaving i actually i like north carolina i like where i'm at yeah and that's so that's so clutch dude you've you've had friends move out you got family there like that's one yeah. of the reasons you know i've been a new england boy my whole life and I, I you know part of me part of me loves the idea of moving somewhere that's a little more temperate temperature wise my yeah. wife would love to move somewhere warm but dude i have like my roots are here i just i can't yeah. possibly imagine leaving my family and my friends and right. the places that i grew up around and like well, it was different for me because you know i was 21 22 when i left you know what i mean you're well yeah you you did it at the perfect time yeah it was like yeah. it was it was easier for me to do that you know what i mean where you now yeah, having a family having a kid and like he's, yeah, now he's, he's a school in, system we have that's friends, a whole other with friends factor with the parents of exactly. kids that he's friends with so it's like yeah it's like it was a different time it was like the right time for me to pick up and do that you know what i mean yeah uh, but no, I, I'm I'm happy where I'm at, honestly. And I, if anything, I miss Mass Massachusetts more than I miss Colorado. The time, like, yeah, the time you lived here, I remember. Yeah. I'll never forget the time, the first time you came out to to visit, <laughs> yeah. um, to make some content. And you were like, "There's so many trees." trees. <laughs> Like, yeah, dude. dude. And then, where the ev- fuck do you live? I guess the Rocky Mountain, like Colorado. No, yeah, is just for no real. Fucking trees, and dude. you know it's funny. Crazy. Every one of my friends that's moved out here said the same fucking thing about the, the trees shit. out here. The this fucking trees are huge. Yeah, trees, and I'm like, dude. I know, dude. The fucking yeah. trees. And then I go to Colorado. I'm like, there's so many rocks and mountains. Yeah, there's mountains and shit. Yeah, yeah it's like, <laughs> yeah. But that's no, fucking... ge- geographically, I'm happy, bro. I like it here. I like it. Love it. I love to hear that. I uh, I've been a schlub. I still I still would love to come down and spend a day or yes. two just fucking seeing the house, hanging out. Oh, dude, you got to, man. I want to see the studio too, dude. Yeah. I know, like, so I I want to tell you this. So obviously, something I've talked about on this podcast before is like, as you know, when I started YouTube, it was like a creative outlet, and it's like you're trying things. Like you remember, like when I yeah. my first videos were very like music influence i was doing like Mm -hmm. diss tracks i was producing and even in the time we were making videos together the reason i you know hired you was to mix music i was still doing music stuff and like as time went on and it the business became more of a business and it's like Mm -hmm. supporting your family and then you're growing the business i'm doing the second channel and it's like all the administrative stuff you're wearing all these hats it's very easy and it's very easy to let 
some of those creative juices start to dry up as yeah. kind of the necessities of the business that's working yeah. and the stuff that's working, you're putting all your time into. Yeah. And music was one of those things that, oh, yeah. you know, was that thing that dried up, which is not uncommon. You know, you see this, right. with, you know, old guys that are like successful entrepreneurs that still pick up a guitar and can mm -hmm. strum the fucking strum the strings or whatever. But uh, I went through a, a period like the last five, you know, six or seven weeks where I, I, just like the the cyclical feeling of burnout where I'm like, hey, I need to do something that really gets my juices flowing and I'll yeah. continue to do the business and stuff. So I've been picking back up the guitar, the amps yeah. out, dude. I'm, I'm writing songs. Let's go. I got like yeah. four songs penned right oh, now. Oh, for real? I was going to ask you about that. Yeah. Yeah. And like, I'm, it's just, oh, and it feels so good, man, to just yeah. pick up a guitar and start writing songs again. And I'm like, I, I'm thinking about the way I would approach it. And I've been watching a lot of... Um, I've been spending a lot of time on Instagram for a couple of reasons, just because it's so much different than YouTube mm -hmm. and there's independent artists on Instagram that are just like the way music is marketed now is so, oh, yeah. so very, weird. so different. Yeah. <laughs> I don't and, like and it. For, yeah. I, yeah. I don't either. And, and for those, you know, for those of you guys listening, watching too, that like Josh is an avid musician, an incredibly talented musician makes Thank music. You. Um, so we kind of have that commonality commonality and and bond around that as well but yeah. uh i'm just trying to think like how could i create the music and make the content what would i do i'm not expecting it to mm -hmm. you know i'm never I'm, i don't ever have this expectation of like music i'm not going to be like joji and like give right. up youtube yeah. and all of a yeah. sudden become some like touring yeah. popular artist uh mm -hmm. you know filthy frank but i would love a place to upload i feel like instagram would be a good place and i and i want to do it in a way that's like it would be, it's kind of like more folky, more country folky. Yeah, like yeah. I'm, I think that's it's so gonna funny. be just a, just that's acoustic. the shit that I'm getting into. Is like yeah, the next dude. shit I'm getting into is like bluegrassy, like oh, folky I'm obsessed. Shit. Yeah. Like like just and I, I've thought about taking lessons again and like to learn different finger picking styles. That's what but I've like been doing, bro, I've been doing the same. That's crazy. This is like <laughs> I literally just you know what I just learned, bro. Finger what? picking. You should try to learn it. Fucking never going back again by Fleetwood Mac. Oh. You should try it because you have to do a polyrhythm on you have to do triplets with these three and quarters here with your that thumb. That sounds horrific. You should try to learn it. It's dude, it's it's fucking awesome. Once you learn it though, it's so addicting to play. It's such 100%. a fun one. Yeah, I I've 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 uh I've learned like one or two new patterns recently and like it's so crazy how like how frustrating it is yeah. <laughs> during the process of learning, especially if you're trying to like I'm always like singing lyrics or like humming melodies in my head and it's like that's fucked like if you're learning new finger picking you can't so no you, you have to fingers. do you have to you have to let it this get become second but, nature first but <laughs> once once it's locked in and you can just and it just goes without even Flow giving state. it a second thought it's so satisfying yes dude that's you what just pick up like blah your fucking hands yes, going. you don't bro. know what it's doing who cares it's doing it. yeah. <laughs> it's going. and then you can start thinking about other shit and it's yeah. like uh, i love so it. much so much respect for people yeah. that are sick at like that kind of blue ga blue bluegrass acoustic uh, country type shit. Uh, Billy Strings, yeah, yeah, dude, crazy, Legend. crazy legend. Yeah, yeah that, I love that shit. That's it's just so funny you mentioned that that we're both like making this because I did the album like the Shui album that was yes. like you know different. It was like my other shit kind of, but like totally doing a pivot now and like my buddy alex is moving out here who's like a great folk singer he's got the best folk like deep folk voice kind of like Love i don't it. know just rugged type voice and it's amazing and we've got like 15 to 20 songs that we've written over the years and shit that we're like so we're ready to like grind down, yeah bro we're yeah. ready to grind some shit out so it's there's gonna be a lot of cool music stuff coming i guess from both of us then Dude. Yeah. Yeah. And, and to, to finish my point, I think like if I am going to release it, I think I want to do it in a way that is, um, you know, like the way we did the, ch like, like the chill video yeah. in the, <laughs> and, uh, and, like, uh, was your crib it was in your one. crib. Yeah, like it yeah. was, it was produced well, edited well. Yeah. Um, but it was obviously very it's still ironic. It was still it like was a ironic. It was, yeah. it was meant to be ironic. Yeah. I want this to be like just actual music. Yeah. And just for kinda, real. Yeah. For real raw and but but I don't want to just release like me doing it on an iPhone. Like I want to shoot it so it looks nice in mm -hmm. some sort of setting. Like and the thing I've noticed on Instagram where people do it, like they'll make a song and then they'll just record themselves 
playing the song in like 50 different yeah. places and just up just spam clips of them playing it in like different captions and it's like yeah, yeah. if someone's following you maybe it gets tiring but you're just trying to catch that one new, time yeah. where it hits the algorithm right. because it looks a certain way or it feels a certain way yep. and it's not like it's the whole song it's usually only it's like a, a 20 or 30 second, second clip, clip. Yeah, yeah. the other thing that these Instagram artists are doing to to promote their music is their which part of me hates this is they're they're manufacturing fake scenarios where it's like oh my mom walked in on me creating this beat yeah uh, or like my girlfriend walked in on me when I was making this banger I didn't right. even know and it's like the the camera angle of them and the music and they're like going nuts and it's like yeah they're you're you're manufacturing these scenarios that are conducive to the Instagram content format yeah, yeah. and it's like when you see it you know it you're like this is the there's a dude. The fu- Forrest Griffin, I think he's like a Christian artist. He has that mm. song. It was like number one on Spotify in the last couple of weeks. Call and I'm feeling good, like I should. Yeah, blah, blah, yeah, yeah. Blah, blah. And like the his the one that went mega viral was him. What I believe is completely manufactured. It was like a picture of a little gazebo in public, and it was like him with his like little rig and his headphones on, and it was like a sign that said, right. "Sit down if you're having a bad day." Uh, someone and a, sat down. A guy and, comes Whoa. over, puts the headphones on. He starts. He plays the keys. Yeah, and he's then, like, I got a cancer diagnosis earlier today, yeah, but yeah, this yeah. fucking making me feel better, yeah, man. And it's obviously the pre-recorded track. And <laughs> yeah, it's like, I'm feeling good. And then it's like he gets. I emotion. saw that video, bro. He I think I saw emo- that fucking video. Did. Yeah, it has like 300 million <laughs> yeah. fucking views. Fuck that like, guy, man. <laughs> that shit was obviously thought up and contrived, and there's yeah. nothing about that that's real. Yeah, but it works so well, and I'm like, ah. Oh. It's uh, tough though know, because here's the thing though it's tough because in this approach it's creative I guess but I just, it is I hate it is authentic but, but you don't want exactly and you don't want to you don't want to like do this like okay here's my music where I'm being unironic and here's me fucking immediately trying to just like jump on trends you know what I mean hundred percent like you don't yeah. want to do that so like and that's where I've struggled because like I released the album did nothing I made a single video didn't do anything to promote right. it because I just don't know. Cause I'm, I'm trying to answer that same question of like, yeah. how can I deliver this in an authentic format that people will give a shit about? Because like, I think the music speaks for itself, but it's like, but I can't make myself film one of those fucking videos. You know what I mean? Where I'm yeah. like, babe, would you catch me making the fucking yeah. hit of the summer? Like, you know what I mean? I can't, my so girlfriend like I, caught me naked bopping to my yeah. own fucking song in the shower. Uh. And I've yeah, and I've so that's resulted in me just releasing it and doing nothing to promote it, which is like <laughs> which is probably not scenario. yeah, probably not the best thing to do. But <laughs> yeah. I'd almost rather do that than like have a bunch of fucking like videos of me promoting it that I'm like cringed out on and like, like yeah. I hate and like do you know what I mean? So like I don't know, I don't know what the answer is. I'm actually trying to solve like answer that myself. Yeah, you know there's what I mean? Because I, there's got to be a happy medium. There are yeah. there are definitely people like. And I, and I, when I think of this, I, I really think about like kind of country bluegrass stuff comes to mind, like like yeah. Jelly Roll. These guys who are just moving performances certainly mm-hmm. um, lend itself to that authentic, yeah. uh, just different scenarios of them singing it. Um, there's definitely a, a, a medium place where that can be done. It depends yeah. on the style of music, though. It can that, be hard, yeah, heavily dependent on. It that. can be very hard, like for like a style of music that is meant to be um, elicit emotions and like, yeah, you can't be like vocal. It's like, you can't do that. You can't shit. start it with a fucking like walking it. Yeah. It's gotta be delivered in an authentic, like a, a serious format. Yeah. You know? And you're kind of standing then you, on then the you back teeter of the, the line of being cringy. Then you teeter the line of being cringy. Cause now you're like delivering this in a serious format. And then you're like, wait, but what if it's fucking cringe? And like, people are like, wait, who's this Creed guy? You know what I mean? Or some <laughs> shit like, you know, that's my word. So like, that's, and I think the answer is just doing something that that's authentic, that fits the vibe of the song. And you know what I mean? And like you yeah. said, doing, doing different options and not just doing yeah. one, like getting in different f- locations that elicit different feelings. Cause I think yeah. within the first three seconds, I've decided if I like, if I'm going to save the song or not, because it's like, yeah, it has 100%. to encapsulate you to that point where it's like, it kind of like, whoa. And yeah. if it doesn't, but like, you're not going to like be able to know exactly what that is. So it's kind of about, like you said, going out in different locations that are good, good locations that fit the vibe of the song. You know what I mean and then hoping that one of those can hit that you know what i mean can elicit that like whoa that wow factor certainly like, you know and like mean? doing it maybe like an acoustic rendition yeah. of a song that's yeah. already has an album version that has a full band mm-hmm. and like that's i think that's the one thing that that i would would do is you know where previously it's like oh you make a you make a video put it on youtube and you're done where it's like no you need yeah. to be making 
multiple iterations of you performing this song in different scenarios and uploading yeah. it to shorts into YouTube into TikTok. Um, I'm sorry, into Instagram. And in a, in, in, a, in a way that's not cringy, you're just mm. uploading the same song a lot. And I think, I think it's easy as an artist or somebody who does this to to get worried that like, oh, people are going to get upset that I'm like constantly talking about the but same song. But people aren't it, thinking about you do as not much care, as they, they don't bro. fucking care, bro. You the, showed up in their feed along if, with a thousand other if, people. If they you know didn't what I mean? Like it, they swiped it. They took swiped, a second, and then yeah, on the next they day, they don't, don't even remember. So like, no care. one, nobody cares. They're not thinking about it as much as you are. No one's thinking about your content as much as you are. No one's thinking about like what no. you're uploading and frequency and like you know what right. I mean. Yeah. So yeah, I agree. There, I, there yeah. will inevitably be that one content that's like you've uploaded this seven times. Yeah, of course. You're like, and then and then it's in your head, but it's like that one dude who religiously follows you that like exactly. is actually your biggest fan that's making you have the most self-doubt about yourself <laughs> exactly yeah it's always how it is man <laughs> it is it's a fucking cruel world cruel, uh, I'm cruel a, world <laughs> i'm excited dude because you're uh, you're just an all-around very talented musician between vocals and in guitar playing i would say guitar is kind of your main instrument would be probably my yeah assessment um and and even the album you made the Shui album you made was awesome. You last you visited last time you visited we listened to that in this office yeah. I'm sitting in right now and I loved it. Um, thank you, man. I have one of one of them actually my fondest memories. I don't know why. Like you were all, you've always been. You know when I think about you and music, it's like you're the the Blink One Eighty Two guy. Like yeah. you grew up just yeah. loved Blink One Eighty Two, and I remember in our trip to New York, I remember we were just in the Toyota Corolla. Driving down, just bought like listening to bops all the way. But I remember yeah. we finally got to the city, and we were like stuck in traffic, or we, we were on, not stuck in traffic. We were on the way to the Airbnb mm -hmm. and just put on uh, the uh, enemy, either enemy of the enemy state of the or state. take off your pants and jacket. Yeah, and Blink One Eighty Two just listened to the whole album. And yeah, we were just both singing every word. And it yeah, was the every fucking word, best. bro. Yeah, because I awesome. also grew up on the Blink One Eighty Two oh, yeah. albums, and it was yeah. just the fucking. That particular moment of that trip has always been one of my fondest yeah, memories. Dude. It was so good. Yeah, that 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 kicks ass, dude. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, so fucking awesome. So that's man. We've talked music, we've talked beast, personal life. I know you said the soft camera, but you got obviously you got married. I want to say yeah. like a year ago. It's been a uh, year actually now. no, it's a, a December second of this last year. So it, wasn't oh, it was only that like long. six months. Yeah, Jesus. Like six months. I know it feels like forever, bro. But <sighs> yeah. Yeah, wild. I'm coming up. Let's see. Ju I'm coming up on. Don't Christina will kill me if I'm wrong. <laughs> Sixteen, eight. My eight year anniversary. Woo! Eight year anniversary. Are you June, sure, bro? The final answer. Twenty sixteen, <laughs> right? Twenty four. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Which damn. is crazy. And then, so, yeah, and we've been together for almost eleven years. In December tw twenty or twenty thirteen, it's crazy. It. I will. It just man. It goes quick. It does. Yeah. And. For not for nothing, but like I think one of the reasons it's gone quick is because, and to Christina's credit, we just have. Uh, I'm just very blessed. Like I just our relationship is it feels very uh, easy, you know, compared yeah, to it should. Yeah, it should. That's how it should feel. Yeah. yeah, and you know some of these uh, some of these videos I make on the internet, and I'm and I, I look at the landscape of dating, and, and a lot oh, of these videos yeah. that go viral of people that are just so torn up because men are terrible and scumbags and women are all thoughts. And it's like, it feels like there's these two camps and nobody can yeah. meet in the middle. I know there's people that find people they love and can share a life with, but those aren't the people making videos on social media. So I mm. definitely get it. I've gotten this distorted view yeah. of what the dating scene is like now for young kids. Mm -hmm. I think because it looks so awful from what you see all on right. the internet, from these videos that kind of rise to the top, but yeah. it, a byproduct of that is me just being so um, so thankful that I, I feel like I'm in a, a very, in in many ways, effortless I mean, is not the right word, but it's like it just feels very comfortable in a, in yeah. a great way. Like we challenge each other. We, we're, we're not, we try not to be complacent, but we're just such good friends and very compatible and complimentary in so many ways. And I feel like you and you and your wife are the same. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So yeah, I'm excited for you. So that six months is going to be six years real fast, buddy. <laughs> oh, I know. I know, man. No, believe me, I'm like the same way because we, we've been together for we're like coming up on 10 years. So like, oh, I, yeah, I you guys have been together in, since high school. I dude, say. I haven't yeah. I haven't even dated since high school. You know what I mean? So like that, like yeah. I, I have no idea what it's like to date out there nowadays. Scary. Looks like a scary world out there. <laughs> 
Sure does. But sure does. I'm either way, I'm yeah, happy for both of us. We we got two great women, that's for sure. Yes, sir. Not to brag, but not to brag. <laughs> <laughs> Good shit. Oh, you well, fucking losers out there that don't. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> you fucking lonely fucking idiots. <laughs> ah. I'm kidding. That's not funny. We're you kidding. We love you guys. For sure. you're, you're yeah, great. Definitely. Just, you will. Just, just, just keep uh, keep on Tinder keep, and stuff. Yeah, keep, I think keep that's keep the way. Tinder. I think that's what they're doing now. <laughs> uh, just get in the gym. I don't know. Do something. I don't know what the fuck. <laughs> I wouldn't. I wouldn't even know uh, what to, how to give people advice. I, my only advice would be like you got to. Just take care of yourself first. Like yeah, exactly. Yourself and then, that would be then the you advice. Can work on finding someone else. Yeah. yeah, which is boomer advice, but whatever. Who cares? Yeah, who it's cares? True. Yeah, <laughs> that's sad, man. What a fucking treat, man. I'm so appreciative of you spending some time. I know you're a busy man now, and your 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 life down down south. But uh, I yeah. just have uh, so many fond memories of our time together, and we'll always, always appreciate. Uh, some of the stuff we did and look forward to, you know, keep in touch, seeing, seeing what happens in your life, seeing the new music and seeing yeah, the pops. Absolutely. Uh, and, uh, I, I always, I'm all, I'm always flapping my gums about it, but I, I gotta come down. Let's, we gotta do like a we'll folk make it song happen. together or something. Oh yeah. When you come down, we gotta make a if song If we could do together. like, just like, like put together a folk song where it was just us like harmonizing beautifully over oh, some fuck, like yeah. delicious finger picking. Come yeah. On. Let's come do on, it, bro. dude. Let's do it. That would be film good. a lush life spicy noodle challenge in my kitchen while we're at it. <laughs> yeah, Who cares? Let's do it. Let's do it. Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> Fuck yeah. Good shit. Well, thanks everyone for listening and watching. Thank you, Josh, for being here. Uh, I love you, brother, and we'll talk to you soon. Yeah, love you, buddy. Thanks. Deuces.